Hello, this is Randall Root, and in this video we are going to talk about indexers. Whenever you have a, a list of objects, you can actually identify the individual elements of the list by using an index. This allows you to pull out the value. If, on the other hand, you make a, an object from a custom class, you'd normally pull it out based on various properties. For example, in this, exam this demo here, I have a class who's pretty much devoted to storing data, specifically three items of data. So I made my three fields and I made my three properties to go along with those fields. I have a constructor that if you want to, you can pass the items in one at a time and I'll fill up the properties, which of course will fill up the fields. Pretty straightforward stuff. And now I can pull out the, the individual values by referring to the property. Similar to the list up here, the array-like object, but different. For one thing, I'm not using an indexer, but what if I could? Would that make my life better? I don't know, but it might be a nice extra feature. And this is what an indexer is. The idea is that you can make an object and then treat it like it was a collection or array of items. To get this to work though, you have to actually set up a special property in order for it to, to behave this way. The property would look something like this. So here it is. Um, the trick with this is you make a property and you have to call it this, as in this object. Then you indicate how you're going to identify one item of a collection from another. Now you'll need a collection of data. Since I have three items in here, I'll indicate that I want a collection of three items. I just made up a name. And what happens is that when they go ahead and reference this object and pass in an integer index, you can use other things like a decimal or a string as well. Uh, when they pass in an integer index, I'll use that to find the member of the array and return it. Or I'll take the value coming in and set that member of the array. Now I could also use something else, uh, a little bit more efficient, but this is fine for our demonstration. This is certainly kind of bare bones. I mean, you could also have some validation logic saying, if they put in an index value that is outside the range of 0, 1, and 2, which is, you know, the the three elements of the array, um, you know, give an error message or something, or do something something different. Uh, but bare bones, this is pretty much it. Now, <clears throat> with this syntax, it's legal for me to go through and use, oops, <clears throat> use code like this now. But does it actually work? Let me comment this out too. I got a blank. And let's see why that's happening. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a breakpoint on here. And I'll kick it off. And we see it comes up and it initializes that array. But the array is initialized with null values. Then it comes over here, and it passes in A, B, and C. But I never initialize or set the values of the uh, array with any uh, values from my code. And so when it comes back later on and tries to find element zero. It comes up with nothing. Okay, so the issue is I need to go through and set the value somehow. It's not that hard to do. I just go ahead and say this. Uh, excuse me. No, actually, I can use this also. But I, I need to have my collection element zero is equal to item one. 
And I would do that for each of these. <clears throat> this would be two, and this would be three. And now it'll initialize with those values. So kicking this off, it calls a constructor. It <coughs> initializes the pro uh, fields in here. It'll still be null at this point. But then it goes through the constructor and passes in the values for element 0, element 1, and element 2. And now when it comes back and goes down to here, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to step into the uh, property by unchecking a little box that says automatically step over properties. And I'll come back over here and um, now you can see I've got actual data in there. A, B, C. And if I ask for element 0, it's going to bring that out. And I get it. Now that works just peachy with setting a um, setting up the uh, object using the constructor. But if you're using an initializer list, which is another option, things change a little bit. Let me show you what I mean. So actually, I can take this one off here. I'll put the breakpoint on the initializer list. If you haven't seen the, uh, didn't know, don't know what initializer list is, uh, check out the uh, video I have uh, posted on initializer list. Uh, that'll kind of help to fill in the blanks. But right now, you'll see that basically it's a way of setting up the property values just like this, but using a default constructor. Watch. So as I go through here, it does the same thing, sets up the, the array, but it doesn't call this constructor, it calls the default constructor, the one without any parameters. And it starts processing the code. Now the problem is, I could take this code and I could put it up here in the curly braces, but there'd be nothing to be passed in. And you might think, well, I'll just set it to the properties, but those properties aren't set yet. The initializer list doesn't have, uh, set the property values until after the default constructor runs. So if you watch, it's only after the default constructor runs that the items are then set to a value. So putting code in the default constructor that would map the array list to the items is not going to help me. <clears throat> One thing, they're value types instead of the reference type. So anyway, I'm not going to box it. I'm just going to go ahead and change this around a little bit different. So anyway, if I come through here and I walk through the various different settings, um, I still come out with a null value. These are filled, but that array is filled with nulls. So a simple way to resolve this is just to go ahead and on the individual properties use this code. I, I can use both. I don't need both. I'll uh, just comment this out. And I'll take this code and put it up here, right in the property. So set the property value, but every time you set the property, also go ahead and set the collection. And set the collection, and set the collection. Of course, I have to change this code a little bit. It's item one for, or excuse me, element one for item two, and element two for item three. <coughs> and now when I use the initializer list, or if I go through and I use the uh, constructor with parameters, it doesn't matter. Anytime I'm setting this property, it's going to go ahead and map the values to the array. So if I now go through here and kick this off again, it comes up with a value. And I'll slow it down a little bit and just walk through it quickly. Go 
comes up here, initialize it, it calls the default constructor, and then after that it goes through and starts setting these values. And when it does, not only does it set the value of item 1 to, for the field, but it also goes through and maps that to the array. Later on, when I go ahead and ask for the data back, I can see that the array is indeed populated with data. Oops, lost my smart tag, didn't I? Okay, well, be that way. I guess you may have to squint here, unless I can fix this thing. Come on, give me a smart tag and pin it. Not going to happen. Okay, squint if you can, but anyway, you can see here, there we go. You can see, <laughs> you can see that, yes, uh, sorry guys, I know that is not much fun to look at. You can see here, yes, the values are actually there. <laughs> so that is setting up an indexer. It's a not a must-have, but it's a nice-to-have. And um, it's been around for a long time, certainly longer than the initializer list has been around. So you've been able to do this since the beginning of .NET. Uh, initializer list didn't come in until I think 2005. So it's, uh, you may see a lot of code where they ignore the, uh, I've seen on the internet, where they ignore the default constructor and they just show an example of this, which is fine if you're not using an a initializer list, but if you are, you have to remember that extra caution because of the order that things happen with the initialized list. It calls that default constructor first. Okay, that's all I can think of to say. So I will see you later. And thanks for watching. Take care.